Hi there and welcome to this first normal form example video. For more detail on uh, normal form and what it actually means, uh, first normal form and what it actually means, please see the previous video in the playlist where you'll be able to see that discussed in much more detail. This, this video is meant to be um, an, an example walkthrough that takes that theory and just shows how it works in another example. So if I have a look at my first normal form here, I need to make sure there are no repeating groups. That's the first thing on my list. So I'm going to go to my data and we can see that this is for a pizza shop example where we have uh, orders made by people. OK, these are the customers here. OK, and then these are the pizzas that they've ordered and we've got a total price for the order there. So we can see Barry Baker here has ordered three pizzas and Joanne Harris has ordered three pizzas. So we're going to, well actually more than that because there's different quantity, but three different types of pizza let's say. Right, so let's have a quick look at how that might work. So if I take one of these records, the Barry Baker record, okay, and put it into this example here. Now what I've done there is I've taken each of the types of pizza that they've ordered and I've made it into one record. So that's how it should be in a table, is in one record. But we can see when I do that, Okay, that we end up with a set of repeating attributes. Okay, we've got pizza code, pizza name, quantity, and price here as one set. So let's just uh, highlight those in one particular color. Okay, and we've got the same going on over here. Okay, and let's do a different color for those. Okay, and we've got another one going on here. And obviously, we can see that if that was to work, we'd end up with, you know, depending on how many different types of pizza we order, we can end up with a huge great big table. So either way, we can see that we have a repeating set of attributes, pizza code, pizza name, quantity and price. And these are the ones that we're going to remove. So we go to our normalization here. OK, and we're going to put these across. So we say, right, so uh, the order number, the dates, customer ID, all of these things were OK. So we're going to copy these and I'm going to paste those as values into there and then also the total price okay now the total price just to be clear if we have a look over here the total price is not repeated we can see there's gaps there total price is for the order so because it's not repeated it's not part of the repeating group so that's that and then we're going to take out our repeating group which is pizza code pizza name quantity and price okay so uh, we put this in here so copy and paste the values here but i also when i do that when i remove it i'm going to take a copy of the primary key so do that or a copy of the identifier for the in this case the orders so i've got those in there now OK, and the next thing I need to do is to look at, uh, well, let's just go back to my tick box. So, yes, there are no repeating groups now. Right, all data values are atomic. So let's have a look at that. So that's basically making sure nothing can be broken down further. So if we have a look here, order number's fine, order date, customer ID, right, customer name. So we seem to have a surname and a forename, or a forename and a surname, in the same field here, which potentially we can imagine in, in this scenario that um, someone might ring up with their name as an example and you know we're able to search for them by their name and at the moment we're not really able to do that because you know if we wanted to search by their surname it's hidden in a larger field so we want to be able to do that so in our example here okay let's just move these down so if I say move them down one okay and we've got customer forename and customer surname okay right so that's sorted that let's just go back and check any of the rest of them so postcode address okay well we've got address there we've really probably should be uh, the first line of the address and then the town okay so we could maybe sort that out so we go back into our uh, normalization and let's move that down again so let's call this customer address one and then 
Okay. Right, so let's fix that. Um, let's go back and check any of the rest of it. So customer address, postcode, pizza code seems okay, pizza name, quantity, price, and then total. Right, okay. So in all of the rest of them we seem okay. So if we go back to our tick box, so we're happy with the data being atomic. Each field has a unique name, so let's have a look in our tables. So order number, order date, customer ID, phone name, surname, yep, yeah, all of those seem okay. Order number, pizza code, pizza name, quantity, price. Yeah. So we've got unique names, okay, so that's fine. And so we'll go back and tick that one off. Okay, and right, the tables have primary keys, so let's have a look. I don't think we have yet. So we can see the order number. Well, first off, before we do the before we do that, we really ought to sort our data out to see what that looks like. So at the moment, what we've done is we've taken out uh, pizza code, pizza name, quantity and price. So if I take that out and put it into a different table there. Okay, and we need to do that with uh, a copy of the primary key. So if I copy that and let's paste it there. Move it up one. Okay, let's just merge those back. <coughs> uh, there we go. Right. So we need to put, fill these in. So this is one two five zero. Oh. One two five zero. Oh. One two five one. One two five one. Okay, and we can get rid of. Well, let's just move this back over here okay, and we can get rid of the gaps now in our data right so we can we can now see what our tables are actually looking like so I'm going to want order number here to be my primary key for this table so back in my normalization I'm going to make that my primary key and then for my other table okay I've got order number and pizza code, pizza name, quantity and price. Okay, well, I can see that I have uh, order number and on its own, can't be a primary key because we've got duplicates. Okay, and same with pizza code because I have duplicate two people have ordered the same pizza there, which sort of makes sense. Okay, so, but we can see that my order number and pizza code together as a pair Okay, are going to be unique. Okay, because we, if I did want, let's say, on order number one two five zero, oh, I wanted another meat feast, then I would just add one to the quantity. So it would never be repeated as a record. So in this situation, I'm able to to do that. So these two fields together become my primary key. So in here, I'm going to just underline my primary keys, just because that's uh, a good way of indicating that that's what they are. Okay, and back in my normalization, I've got order number, okay, and pizza code together, make my primary key. So I've now completed first normal form. Having said that, I've also need to make sure that my data values are atomic in my actual data before I move on to second normal form. So back in the data here, Okay, I've now changed it to have customer forename and customer surname and customer address one and town. So we make sure that that's in place so we don't forget that stage before we try and move on to second normal form.